Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. My name is Braden Knudsen. I'll be your host for this webinar today. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us for another webinar. And as we get started here, we'd like to invite you to participate in some of the polls that we have down at the bottom of the screen as we go through our announcements. Our next webinar will be on Tuesday, November 28th at 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and that webinar will be is titled Getting Started with Web, in Web, Web Indexing by Catherine Grant. Um, and that webinar will be um, an update to a previous webinar that she held before. Um, some things have changed, and so she's going to update some of the information that was in her other webinar. So we invite you to come join us and see what's new um, with web indexing. That'll be a great one. And also, if you ever have any questions or comments um, or feedback, feel free to email us. Our email address is down there at the bottom of the screen as well. We always love feedback. It always is really helpful. So today we'll be pleased to hear from Jean Nesbitt, who will be giving a presentation titled Family Search Memories, Connecting Relatives Near and Far. Jean graduated from BYU with degrees in genealogy and library science. She was a stake family director for 10 years before serving five missions with her husband, including twice to family history worldwide support. She is a mother of seven and a grandmother of 27. Her hobbies are people and genealogy. Um, and as we get to Time turned over to Jean as she gets things loaded up. I'd like to remind you about our comments box and a questions box on the right hand side of the screen. Um, feel free to write in with any questions or comments, and we'll make sure that they are answered by the end of the screen, end of the end of the presentation. Sorry. Um, so we will turn the time over to Jean. Well, I'm excited to be here today to present one of my favorite things in Family Search, and that is the memories. And it is uh, the memory pages in Family Search and they are connecting relatives near and far, and this is not moving, so do I need to move something? Go ahead and just click once, and then it should work. Okay, it's not. It is not working, because although this is a nice page, it seems to be frozen up or it is not working. Should we go back to the other one? Try clicking just right in the center real fast and see if that helps out at all. Well. Oh. Okay, we're going to get started then. A life that is not documented is a life that within a generation or two will largely be lost to memory. What a tragedy this can be in the history of a family. Knowledge of our ancestors shapes us and instills within us values that give direction and meaning to our lives. And this is by Dennis New and Schwander from uh, Ancestry.com. And that is so true because they say that after three generations, your descendants will forget you. So here you are, and that first generation past you is your parents, second generation is your grandparents, and then third generation are your great-grandparents. And that's not very far back, just a few generations, and we will be forgotten. What do you remember about your great-grandparents? Do, do you have pictures, stories, or histories? Do you feel connected, or are they only names? Gordon B. Hinckley said, reflecting on the lives of my father, grandfather, great-grandfather, while I was seated in the temple, I looked down at my daughter, at her daughter, who was my grandchild, and at her children, my great-grandchildren. I suddenly realized that I stood right in the middle of these seven generations, three before me and three after me. In that sacred and hallowed house, there passed through my mind a sense of tremendous obligation that was mine to pass on all that I had received as an inheritance from my forebearers to the generation who have now come after me. I sat pondering these things and said to myself, never permit yourself to become a weak link, a weak link in the chain of your generations. Don't you be a weak link in your family's ancestry. So the picture up on the top right was taken 60 years ago of my mother's uh, side of her family. Down below, was a picture taken in January. We have stayed connected. Fifteen of the original cousins in that top picture were in attendance this year. One has since passed away. Be a strong link by accessing and using family search memories. Upload and share photos, documents, histories, and audio stories to keep generations linked because, as Alex Haley said, in all of us there is a hunger marrowed deep to know our heritage to know who we are 
and where we have come from. For instance, this is very exciting because you're a cartoon. We were able to trace your lineage back to a prehistoric cave drawing in southern France. Now, wouldn't that be easy if we could have ours traced back that quickly? Each person, no matter how ordinary, has extraordinary memories to share. And this is found in Family Search. When we get into Family Search, we're going to look for memories. The tenderness that ancestors felt for loved ones, we can feel as well towards them when we access their photos, histories, etc., and Family Search memories. Families are connecting and reconnecting with relatives near and far, and some for the first time. So I'm going to show you 10 steps to uploading into FamilySearch.org memories. And the reason that I'm doing this is because it took me a while to figure out how to do it myself. And then I've had a lot of people ask me, I get confused. How do you do it? And so I'm going to take you on basic step-by-step -step, uh, ways in order to upload these memories into Family Search. And it is so basic. Some of you, if you're really computer literate, will say this is really too basic. But a nice thing about a webinar is you can stop and you can, you know, go back or whatever and s until you get the steps right. So it's really basic. Number one, you need to sign into FamilySearch.org with a username and password or set up a free account. You do not need to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to set up a free account. And once you have, then we're going to get started, which is step one. All memories, photos, etc. must be uploaded into your personal gallery page or they can be dragged and dropped into the ancestors' memories. But I'm going to take you through the gallery page setup so that you can see how it works, where things are, and uh, sometimes you can't drag and drop unless, unless they are in the right format. And We will talk about that in a second. So what is a personal gallery page? Well, that is the collection of every photo, document, history, or audio clip you want to upload into Family Search Memory. So this is where they're all going to be stored from your computer into Family Search. Step number two, you're going to click on Memories. And when you do, this drop-down menu will come down. So normally, you won't have the drop-down menu hiding the little boy's face. But once you click on memory, Memories, that will drop down. Step three, you want to click on gallery and that will open up your personal page. This is my personal page. These two on the top show that I have uh, uploaded two audio um, files. and You can tell they're audio by the little arrows pointing to the right so that it would be easy to go. You click on it then you can hear the voices. These are documents and these are pictures. This will tell you what data was that you uploaded them. And you can add other information on to it too. You can see that I haven't. Step four, you're going to click on the plus sign and that is going to take you into your computer so that you can choose what you want to put in your personal gallery page. After you've clicked on that, before it gets into the computer, this little disclaimer tells you that this is intended for all ages and they don't want you to upload anything that uh, is inappropriate. For instance, a friend of mine tried to upload his grandmother in her swimming suit and they wouldn't accept it. So, you know, all generations are going to be seeing this and they want it to be uh, appropriate. This tells you that you can drag and drop your files if they are in the correct form. You can also create a story right here, right in Family Search, or you can um, import your Instagram and Facebook pictures. But what we're going to do Step five is we are going to choose something from our computer. So we've gone into the computer. I've opened up my files, which is pictures, ancestor pictures, and then the family last name of Lloyd's. Step six is I need to pick what it is I want to upload. And I'm picking this picture of a table that my great-grandfather made for his wife. Step seven, I'm going to click Open. And that will put that table into my gallery. So let's go and look. There it is. Now that table shows up in your personal gallery page. Step eight. I'm going to go to the ancestors memory page. This is my ancestor, Sarah Jane Jones. And I want to select from the gallery. Step nine. That takes me into the gallery. I'm going to find the table. Step 10, I'm going to click the plus to put that into my ancestors' memory page. 
Okay, so now it's uploaded into Family Search. Let's go find it. I'm going to click on Sarah Jane Jones. This is enlarged. It won't be that big when you click on it. I want to find her memory, so I'm going to click on Memory, Memories. Up comes her. I'm going to scroll way down, and there's the table. And it's just that easy. I think this is kind of exciting, fun, to, fun thing to do. <clears throat> I've already, I've also uploaded. This is a piece of her china that came across the ocean and then across the plains. And this is a bedspread that she made herself. I don't have these items. My cousin's does. And this way I can see what her life was like without having them in my possession. I can see she was talented by the bedspread she made. I can tell she liked nice things with her china and that her husband was extremely talented in making her that table. That's what I love about uh, the memories. Is you don't have to have these items. You just need to have someone upload them so you can see them. I put this in here. I wanted you to see her whole page. and This is kind of the format of what you will see. This tells you how many memories are in her page. You can upload photos, documents, stories, and audio. So that kind of gives you, uh, a, you know, a glimpse of what it all is. So here it is, close up, so you can actually read it. 32 memories. She has 29 photos, one document, two stories, and zero audio. And all of the processes are the same. You can either upload by dragging, dropping, if it's in the right format, or you can select from the gallery for anything, whether it's a document, story, or audio. So once you get the hang of how it works, it can be pretty simple to do. The following is why you should upload pictures, documents, histories, and audio clips. I almost forgot to give, the, give you this. Happy birthday. He wonders what it is. Dad and me. And it is pictures of growing up together with his son. Oh, I almost forgot. Jeremy's been working on that for a month. And it's not even digital. Memories are meaningful. Okay, here we are back to Sarah Jane Jones. And I'm going to highlight her uh, in this presentation because I think there's some fun things for us to look at. I just want everybody to know I absolutely love photos. I can stare at them. I love to enlarge them once they're digitized. I love to see the expressions on their faces. I like to explore the backgrounds. I love photos. That's why I love memories because photos are appearing that I have never ever seen before. So when you open up, I click on a photo and you open it up, it will show you if, you know, if they have been identified of who's in that photo. Sarah Jane is the one with the arrow pointing to her. To her left is her husband John who made her the table and to the left of him is their son Charles, we called him Uncle Charlie. All of the people in this picture have been identified. And then it also lets you in the lower left, tells you who contributed the picture. So if you wanted to contact them, you click there and you can get an address. Okay, so I made a comment. I love the picture. How can we read the story? Uncle Charlie wrote about them going into Yellowstone. And the reason I asked that, uh, you know, here I... I submitted it and it shows up now, so it will show up for anyone to see. But I asked that question because in 2014, somebody named Leah wrote that Uncle Charlie wrote a piece about the experience as though it were a Book of Mormon story, so fun to read. And I wondered, how can I read that? She never responded when, when I put this out there, but it, I did meet a distant relative who has written a book, and it's in that book. I bought the book. I wouldn't have even asked him about his book if I hadn't known that Uncle Charlie had written that experience. So it's just kind of fun. Now, I have shown this picture before. This is my grandmother, and this was Mystery Woman. She's always I've always known her as Mystery Woman. I think it's really important that we make comments if we have questions so that other people, as they come and follow us, know that there's reasons to uh, question whatever it is that that you have a question on. So for instance, both of these pictures were labeled Florence May Lloyd. Florence May is my grandmother on the left in the black and white. Mystery Woman is the brown on the right. And you look at the two women, look at the eyebrows. The eyebrows are different. Uh, my grandma's eyes are dark. Mystery Woman's are lighter eyes, perhaps even blue. And my grandma has kinky curly thick hair and the other Mystery Woman has hair that looks like it's been, you know, you know, curled, but it's not like my grandmother's. So this is for a couple of years I thought 
how did this mystery woman get on my grandmother's page? As you look at my grandmother, here she's getting older, perhaps close to the age as the mystery woman, my grandma's wearing glasses. So why doesn't the mystery woman have glasses? I mean, that's my grandma. An interesting little thing is I <laughs> enlarged her picture. I noticed that mystery woman wanted to fix her mouth. It wasn't quite what she wanted, but I think that's kind of funny. All right. This was donated by someone named Donetta, and I emailed her and said, you know, they just don't look alike. I'm, you know, I don't understand. And she wrote back. She turned out to be my father's younger cousin, 20 years younger than my dad. She's 83, and I'm not going to argue with someone who's 83. And she said, you know, on the back, it was labeled Aunt Florence. I'm not going to argue with that because she's 83. But what I could do is make a comment because only the one that uploads a picture can change what's been uploaded. So I made a comment and I said, who is this woman? She does not look like Florence Lloyd, whose hair was thick, curly. Also, Florence's eyes were dark. And perhaps at the age of this woman, Florence is wearing glasses. Her eyebrows are different as well. And so I went ahead and I and I uploaded that in April and it's still there. I if the submitter agrees, then they will make the corrections. And the, there is one person that that uploads a lot on my mother's side, and um, he'll make the changes if he can see that it's valid. Okay, so I'm going back into Sarah Jane Jones's page. And you cannot see all 29 of the pictures, so you look down at the bottom there on the left, and you can get more pictures. But I found these pictures. Most of these pictures that you were looking at, I had never seen before. So I wanted to examine this one. This was at Sarah Jane's husband's burial. And luckily they have labeled this. He died in 1928. So I've enlarged it. This is my grandmother Florence, curly hair, glasses. And you look at her figure and it's a little bit distorted. She wasn't, you know, she was very trim. And she had just, in looking at the her at her page in Family Search, she had just lost her uh seventh child she gave birth and he only lived for a couple hours probably just a few weeks before her father died suddenly of a heart attack so there she's got kind of a sad look on her face of course she would be sad her father passed away here's said sarah jane the one who had the table made for her this is sarah jane's father evan jones this is my grandmother florence's sister luella and i had no idea who aunt mary was so I went into Sarah Jane Jones's page on Family Search and found out that she had a younger sister named Mary. So this is Sarah Jane's youngest daughter. I mean, a little sister and Evan Jones's youngest daughter. So we've got three generations there, not counting this little boy named Wayne. But as I enlarged the picture, I found another little boy that had been missed when they were writing down who they were. And one thing I love about pictures is that you can enlarge them, especially the old photos. You can enlarge them and still have a lot of clarity to them. And look at his sweet face. I mean, there's c compassion in his eyes. He, at this time, was a widower. And I just think that was, I never knew him. And I think this that's just a precious picture. So then I'm setting grandma's, my grandma Florence's sister, Luella. And it made me wonder. Could she be the mystery woman? I can't tell the color of her eyes because her hat is on. So I went to her family search page, and there she is. She's got lighter eyes, probably blue, just like the mystery woman. And there's another picture of her with her lighter eyes. Her hair is not kinky curly. And so I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, this most likely is Luella, my grandmother Florence's younger sister. And that would make sense why she shows up on my grandma's page rather than some woman, random woman showing up on my grandmother's page that doesn't even look like her. That, that had boggled in my mind for years. I was thrilled to put this connection together. So I went and added a comment, another comment. The back of this picture identifies her as Florence May Lloyd. However, because of some facial differences like eyes, mouth, hair, I believe she may be Florence's younger sister, Luella. There have been 25 views of this so far, and no one has said, oh, you're wrong, that's Florence. 
And the amazing thing is, I have a younger sister named Anne, and people my whole lives have always said, are you Jeannie or Annie? Even my aunts and uncles, and even some of my cousins for the longest time until she moved away. So it's, you know, it can be, it's feasible that someone could have mislabeled this picture, putting Florence instead of Fluella. But I wanted to put her in her own family. And you have that opportunity to open up little, uh, you know, books I want to put, or, or files. I want to put her with her parents, with her right name. So I put her with John H. Lloyd and Sarah Jane. So now she appears, both names, uh, Florence and Luella, along with the explanation of, you know, it's recorded on the back, but I really think that she was Luella. Let's go back to this page again. These two boys. Who are these boys? My grandmother had a boy, boys these age, but they're not in the picture. They don't look like my uncle. So I went to Luella's page again, and sure enough, in 1928, her oldest son was age seven, and her youngest son, Wayne, was age three, which fit the picture. So here I have this picture, random picture. I studied it. I looked at it. I was able to identify everybody in the picture, including the mystery woman. I love pictures. I just think this is fun. This is, this is better than a mystery story. So why is it important to comment when photos are mislabeled? Because it is just as important to have correct photos as it is, as it is to have correct records. Once you are gone, who will know the difference? Comments alert others of possible problems that need correction. Here's another example. This is my mother. She is the only one that's labeled correctly in this picture. Her two sisters, Valoy is in the back, her oldest sister, and Blanche is to the right. So I sent a little note. Hey, no, I know this, this is a little bit mislabeled. I also sent the picture to Valoy, the one in the back, her daughter. And she's, oh, yeah, it's my mother's the one in the middle. This needs to be fixed. So um, the fellow who, who uploaded this, he is really good about changing it. However, now none of them are marked correctly, not even my mother. So <laughs> that made me laugh because this is the, the way they're supposed to be. So I wrote him back and said, wow, I guess I didn't make myself clear. And then I went into more explanation of which one was his grandmother. He, he was never raised around these women like I was, so it was, I, it's understandable why we, he wouldn't know that. All right, you look at Charles South. You can't tell up in the corner that uh, that's where the picture is supposed to be. That's his headstone. And if you right-click on that, it will take you to your, per, you know, your personal gallery page, and I was able to select his picture and put him in there, which makes more sense than his headstone picture. And sometimes when a picture's been uploaded, they will put, put it there. For instance, Sarah Jane for a while, it showed her as a table, and I had to go in and fix that. But I want to look at this picture of his family. When you click on a picture for just a second, you can see everyone that's labeled in the little circles, and then it goes away. And if you hover with your mouse over each face, then it will pop up, the circle will pop up. All of these have been identified in this picture, and I love that. I got a notification, a picture came up in Family Search, and they didn't know one of the people in the picture, and it turned out it was Sarah Jane Jones. I said, hey, that's my great-grandma, so I was able to label her, and that worked out great. Okay, I'm taking all those away, and I want to put this in an album. The last name is South, like in Northeast South, and I wanted to put it in that album. So I selected an album that I had already set up. How do you get to albums? Click on Actions and it will drop down, add to an album, and that will add an album, and you can put them as family members together all in one album. Here's a mom. She's looking at pictures. She can remember going to the hospital, the delivery, brick coming home. I see you're still sorting all those old pics. When do you think you'll be done? Oh, well, I'm not sure I'll ever be. Isn't that the truth? We sit down and start looking at pictures, and memories flood back. I love pictures. This picture I have sh shown before. Those are my grandparents. There's Florence with the glasses and the curly hair. Check and recheck photos. You might may find some surprises. In rechecking this, I found her brother, Florence's brother, Charlie, the one that went to Yellowstone in the background. And I looked at him and thought, surely his wife must be in this picture. And there she is. I think this is fun. I love pictures. I'm a very visual learner. 
but it would have been nice had they labeled their own photos, right? So here's Sarah Jane Jones, and these people in the car, I have no clue who they are. I'm thinking the one on the far right could be my dad, but he looks an awfully lot like a younger brother of his. And I don't know who the woman is. That could be Luella. And the man in the hat, I'm, I don't know who he is. He could be, he could be my grandpa Lloyd, or he could be a, a son. I don't know. But the fun thing about this picture, when you really sit and study the picture, the other kids there are my aunt and her, her brothers, and they all. It's funny how they look the same as they grew older. But look at this tire. I mean, they are in a field. They're in a cornfield. Nobody cares that they are tromping down someone's. I love it. I love pictures. Pause to study and ponder these pictures. This is my mother, and it was labeled at Mill Creek. When my dad built a house, our backyard, Mill Creek ran through our backyard. Is this picture from our backyard, or was she up in the canyons? This is her mother, Sarah, and she's out watering the lawn. This is Sarah Jane Jones on my dad's side, up in the mountains, a local not too far away from Salt Lake City, in a nice lovely dress on an afternoon, and she's probably watching her children and grandchildren. There's Sarah Jane and John, John the one that made the table. Who took these photos and why? Why would you go out and take a picture of someone watering the lawn or a couple just sitting there, not even talking, they're just sitting there? Or my mom, how did they get on the other side of the creek? I mean, these are just interesting things to study and learn about. So check and recheck family search memories often to cover what discover what new has been uploaded into photos. For instance, this photo at the bottom of the page in the brown is a this man here is my great grandfather, and there are only two known other pictures of him ever. He died as a young man in his thirties. I saw that when it was identified on the back who it was. I burst into tears. I thought, I cannot believe this, and I can enlarge his face. I can see his eyes. I mean, I love it. My grandma loved taking pictures, but she couldn't afford a camera. So she would take pictures with her eyes. People always thought she was winking at them. In fact, that's how she met my grandpa. Well, honestly, real pictures will last longer than eye winks or our memories. Hey, let's move on to documents. Remember that man I showed you? These are the only two known pictures I had of him until I found that picture documents you can upload if it's in the right form or you can select from the gallery documents and stories must be in PDF form or it shows as non-supported for a long time I would try to drag and drop documents and it wouldn't go and I was frustrated because I thought it's in you know digitize that I don't get it <clears throat> so how do you put documents and histories into PDF form well first you need to click on Save As, and up will come this, and it will want to know where you want to put your file. And after you've decided that, you look off here to the right, little arrow drops down, and you click on that, and it brings up different formats you can save your picture or your stories or your histories in, and you want it in PDF, click Save, and then it will come into your file as a PDF file. Why do you want it PDF? because others can't change it. Once it's in PDF, people are not going to come and fix your spelling and add other stories. It, you know, they'll leave it alone. So you need it in a PDF file. So this shows you William Whitaker. He's the one of the picture that I just, you know, barely found. William Whitaker Taylor. This tells me who's, who contributed this information. It is in PDF form. And that is another way of showing that it's in PDF form. I found this little arrow drop down by accident. I thought, whoa, what is this? I click, like to click on things, and it tells me that I can download it into my computer. And by downloading, it comes up clean. Shows it's PDF. Here's a little excerpt. This whole page, all I have is just that little, little thing about my grandfather, Taylor. And it's easy to read, and it's clear. I also found my grandmother, Sarah, the one that was out watering the lawn, her entire funeral someone typed up. I was thrilled. When she died, I was 10. I don't remember anything at her funeral. But I love this. Uh, she was an orphan, and so the four, you know, she and her three siblings were passed from cousins and aunts and whatever to live with while they, until they were old enough and married and on their own. And this is one of her cousins who wrote about her. He said, 
I used to be pretty good at wrestling when I was a youngster, but she gave me all I wanted. She was strong and went right after it. I remember going out on the front lawn with water hose and having water fights with Sarah. She was just part of the family, and we played together. Okay, now when I knew Sarah, she wasn't, you know, out having water fights. She was, you know, like a grandma. That was so fun to read. And then he added more. They had a wonderful mother. He's talking to my, you know, my aunts and uncles and my mom. They had a wonderful mother with a wonderful disposition. She was cheerful and kind to those she met, trying to void them up and encourage them to go along. I know that these children of hers will be an honor and a credit to her. They can't help but be. This is their heritage and their right, and they will live up to it. It is, an, uh, it is in them, and all they have to do is to live up to their convictions, and they will be an honor and a credit to their mother. Interesting he would say that because two of her sons struggled for a long time and then, you know, they proved to be very responsible. Also a part of her funeral was the prayer. They typed up my dad's prayer. That's my dad. I had heard him pray my whole life, but I don't remember the words he used. And this was just a treasure, a treasure to see my dad's words. I was so impressed. What treasures have relatives uploaded for you to find? Or what treasures do you have that need to be shared? Do you remember that guy we used to play horseshoes with? Oh, yeah, old what's his name? I used to have a terrible time remembering people's names. Used to? You don't anymore? Nope. I think I've developed some kind of syndrome. What sort of syndrome? I'm not sure, Jose. What's it called when you can't remember people's names but you just don't care? My name's not Cl Jose, it's Clyde. Who cares? We should care. And we need to help those that follow us to care. I had a cousin before he died compiled 45 page book of memories of grandchil uh, grandchildren of Sarah Taylor, the one out watering her lawn. And I couldn't find it. I still can't find it. It's in my house, tucked away safely, or one of my children have, has borrowed it. And to my delight, somebody uploaded, uploaded all 45 pages on family search memories and this is my family the way we looked when he uploaded it I am thrilled I don't have to go and make pages you know 45 copy pages for the other six of my children who don't have this it's right there right there for anyone to see in family search memories stories very similar the same with um, documents they need to be in PDF form. Okay, John Heber Lloyd. This is an excellent story. Someone has written about him. It was written by his son Charlie. And so, he, because he's his son, it's probably more authentic than if I were to write a history on him. There's just something I wanted to show you. This is just fun information you learn that makes it even more personal. On the 23rd of July, 1857, the Mormon pioneers who had come into the Salt Lake Valley celebrated 10 years of being in Salt Lake, and they went up from the canyons to do that celebration. And this was written. <clears throat> One pioneer that did not make this trip was William J. Lloyd, for in his home on, the 20, on July 23, 1857, was born his second son, John Heber. It was on the day of father's birth that messengers rode into the Salt Lake Valley with the startling news that a detachment of the United States Army was on its way to Utah to rep repress a rebellion that did not exist. So that's an important date in Utah history. That was kind of fun to read. Another document I have here was of Florence May, the one with the glasses and the curly hair. I went and I copied off this history that I found, I just copied it off, it was difficult to read. And then, a couple of years later, I go, oh, what is these arrows pointing to the right? So I clicked on that and discovered I could download it to my computer. So I downloaded it, and it comes out clear and legible. I couldn't believe it, because here I'd used this copy to type up this, and I added pictures, and it <laughs> wasn't easy. Although I really am glad that I added the pictures. I think it's a lot more fun. But your pictures will come in clearer rather than just printing it off, downloading it first. And I wanted to share this with you. 
This man, William J. Lloyd, was my uh, second great-grandfather. And this is his daughter, Florence, with the curly hair and glasses. She said, we had a whole block to play in. We had all kinds of fruit in the orchard east of our house. The neighbor kids used to say that Grandfather Lloyd would bury his money all over the lot, which was not true. Grandpa Lloyd was a shoemaker, and he used to pay his tithing in shoes. I wouldn't wear the shoes he made because he didn't make fancy ones, just old clod hopper shoes. Isn't that the truth? Doesn't that sound like a girl that likes to be in fashion? Here's another uh, biography that was submitted by someone. I don't know this man. I recognize the last name as one of my mother's cousins, but I don't. I don't. It's, this is. I don't know who he is. And I like that in the beginning of his history, he tells us where he got all his information from, and that makes it more, to me, more believable or more, you know, more authentic because he's he's not taking credit for himself, which we shouldn't do if we've gotten information from other people. I just wanted to share a little clips on this man's life because all I had ever known about this man was that he was a janitor and that he made caskets. So this was, a, this was insightful. As a cabinet maker and a cooper, one who makes barrels, Charles made many of the chairs, tables, bedstands, and wash tubs, etc. for the community. He made 100 chairs for the chapel before 1900. He also made wooden potato mashers, rolling pins. For years he made caskets for burials, and Elizabeth, his wife, trimmed them with cloth. Not only did he make tables and chairs, but he also made buildings, and there is a building still standing in Randolph, a little tiny town in northern, northeastern Utah that he helped build. I really liked this history. So I told him, I, you know, you did an excellent job. So he uploaded this on the 19th of March. Ten days later, I uploaded. What an excellent job. I mean, it was well written. I was so impressed. About a, a couple weeks later, someone else had read it. And she also wrote, or it could be a guy, how much they enjoyed it. I mean, it's amazing. I think it's amazing that these things are showing up and people are actually going out there and finding it. What a blessing. My niece uploaded this. This is the last letter that my mother wrote before she passed away two months later. The fun thing about this is, you know, she wrote about everybody. They would do a, a letter chain. So they would write a letter, mail it to a sibling. They would add their letter, then mail it around to all six siblings. When you got the letter back, you take out yours, put a new one in. And here's a little bit of history. Jean and Ann spent a week at the LDS Brighton Girls Home. I mean, this is just so fun. You can see that it's just two weeks, you know, two months before she died. Her handwriting is still good. She's still thinking clearly. Um, I just love it. It is a treasure. And it's a treasure that can now be found by everybody. I love that my great-grandpa was born on an important date in Utah history. I love that my second great-grandpa made clodhopper shoes. I love that another great-grandpa was a skilled carpenter. I love chairs. I love my mother. I love that I can find all their stories on Family Search Memories if they have been uploaded. Oh, what are you looking at, Opal? One of our old photo albums. It's amazing. At the time these photos were taken, I hated the way I looked in them. But looking at them now, I think, wow, I wish I still looked that good. Oh, I don't know. I think the older you get, the better looking you get. You're so sweet. I suppose my failing eyesight could account for it, too. Okay, so your eyes and memories will fade. Preserve your memories before they do. This is my father's memories page, and we're going to talk about audio. They need to be in digital form. You can record directly onto your computer with an attached microphone, or a lot of computers now already have them built in, or you can record from your smartphone in the Family Tree app directly into memories. So this is from using my phone app. I took it to test it to see if it really would work. And I followed the the directions, and it popped up here in my father's memory page. And you didn't even have to put it there. It just came. This is something that my older sister did, and it's 10 minutes. I don't know how she did it, but it's really great that it's there and, and uh, already there for people to listen to. Okay, I want to show you. Recording the Family Tree Memories. So you're going to need the Family Tree app on your phone if it's a smartphone. And when you bring it up, 
family tree. I've clicked on my dad and I wanted to do memories because I wanted to try to see if I could do memories from my phone. And from my phone, I can add a document, I can write a story, I can record audio or add a photo if those things are on my phone. If I have a document, a story, or photo, if they're already on my phone, I can upload them from my phone, including record audio, which is what I want to do. So I clicked on record audio. It gives me a choice of topics that I can choose from, like what were your parents like? None of the questions are yes, no. There are questions that make you think and make you answer in complete sentences. Clicked on begin recording, and it recorded. I was thrilled. I could sit and do that now uh, from anywhere I am. I can sit down and say, I think I'll drop in a memory of my parents. Old dogs can learn new tricks. Grandpa, I heard Grandma say that girls learn faster than boys. Is that really true? Uh, ooh, sorry, I wasn't listening. I was trying to figure out how to turn on this washing machine. Never mind, and that's not a washing machine. It's a dryer. Okay, so old dogs can learn new tricks, but they might need to be shown over and over and over again. Will you remember all of that? No. Well, then why am I showing you this? Because it is good to know what can be done. I've done that a lot. You know, I know my phone can do this. I just don't know how. If you still can't remember... And find someone that does. And like I said, the beauty of a webinar is you can go back and redo and look and stop and try it again. That's what makes webinars great. What memories are you collecting for those who will follow you? Here's a couple of ways to generate memories. Simple things like a floor plan, stories, photos, drive around the neighborhood, go to a cemetery. There's a lot of different ways that will spark memories. So... These are floor plans of Sarah Jane Jones's house and her husband, John, who made the table. I asked my dad on the left and his cousin on the right, a much older cousin, not the young one. That Anyway, I asked him at one time if they would draw the floor plan of Sarah Jane and John Lloyd's house. And so they did. At the top of my father's page on the left is where he put the front porch. His cousin put the front porch on the bottom of the page. So there is, it's interesting how they have the same rooms and everything like that. The cousin, the woman, was a little bit more detailed. I mean, look at the, on the lower right hand corner, she put the number of chairs around the table. Both of them, I thought this was very interesting, included in their picture the radio. Now, you know, the woman has put more things into it than my dad did, but I still think it's really interesting. Both of them have been gone for I don't know how many years, but lo and behold, up on Family Search came a picture of Sarah Jane and her radio. And when I looked at the picture that the cousin Louise did, it showed the radio was sitting on a table. And sure enough, I looked at because I thought, well, maybe that radio is, you know, it's not one piece. It is sitting on a table. And my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge that, lighten it up a little bit, and see if it's the same ta table that John Lloyd made Sarah Jane. But if you look over here, here she has the, you know, here's the drapes, and there's the drapes, and there's the table. I love it. I absolutely love it. Don't forget to upload photos and information into your own memory page. And no one will see it until after you're gone. No one can access your page until after you are gone. And so you you know it doesn't hurt to go ahead and upload pictures and things like that into your own personal page. Okay, so wow. Now you know how to upload into Family Search Memories. Because it is fun. I mean it is something that can be done on a cold day, on a warm day. Be a strong link and enjoy getting connected to relatives, sometimes for the first time ever. I mean, I'm seeing things pop up from people I didn't even know existed. I love it. Ancestors can be far more exciting than reading names on a pedigree chart or a family group sheet. Trust me, I mean, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
I promise that if you look beyond the bonds of time and mortality and help those who cannot help themselves, you will be blessed with more closeness and joy in your family and with the divine protection afforded those who are faithful in his service. Young people love stories and photos, and now they have easy access to the technological expertise to preserve those memories in Family Tree on FamilySearch.org. This is by Quentin L. Cook. Young people love this kind of stuff, and they also are willing to help. Access that divine protection for your family by preserving generations of memories for your descendants. The rewards will benefit both roots and branches. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jean, for the wonderful presentation. Um, we appreciate all of the hard work that you put in, and um, definitely inspiring to see all of those fun pictures. It's very neat. Um, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, and if you have any feedback, we'd like to ask you to um, write into us. We have a little feedback box down at the bottom of the screen that you can take some time and let us know what you think of our presentations and um, what we can do to improve our webinar series in general. It'd be great. And also be sure to follow us on our social media sites. We have a Twitter and Facebook account, and all of these recordings are uploaded onto our YouTube channel. Um, you can come back and watch again and again and share them with friends and family. It would be great. Um, so we thank you again and hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving.